There are the traffic cops of the skies. Keeping planes on course. Okay, you are right in the middle of the TCA, sir. Guiding them to safety. Charlie 2937, descend. And keeping them apart. But the system has reached a breaking point. Where is it? If there is another major airline accident, it's going to probably originate from an air traffic control problem. Yep, yep. They got it. There are too many planes. The tools controllers use to track them are inadequate. The failing system is putting passengers at risk. Now the race is on to fix it. You see him, Dan? Before disaster strikes again. Rush hour. John F. Kennedy International Airport. One of the busiest in the world. More than 1,200 planes use JFK every day. In the sky, they're stacked up for miles waiting to land. On the ground, dozens more are waiting to take off. The constant stream of airliners can tax the abilities of even the most experienced controllers. The picture, as it's called, that they have to maintain in their head of everything they're controlling, where everybody is, their speed, their altitude, their separation, also includes constant back and forth talking to the pilots and and this is a matrix of information flow in and out of their brains it's just amazing to watch for the team of air traffic controllers in jfk's tower it's just another day at work it's a job that gets more demanding with each passing year over the last decade there's been a 25 percent jump in traffic at jfk and New York is not alone. It's a trend that concerns some industry experts. One of the things that I do as an aviation analyst is try to keep a good lock on what's happening, watch where the weak spots are in the system. If there is another major airline accident, God forbid, it's going to probably originate from an air traffic control problem. The solution to the looming crisis is being developed here the William J. Hughes Technical Center in New Jersey. It's the workshop of America's Federal Aviation Administration. The center has been involved in every major advance in air transportation system technology since 1958. Airport design, aircraft safety and security, communications, navigation, Scientists at the William Hughes Center have tackled aviation's most difficult problems. Today, this plane is at the heart of one of the largest projects in the history of the FAA. They're using it to design a new air traffic system that will help manage more traffic safely. Together, test pilots and researchers need to figure out a safer way to get airplanes into and out of America's airports. They have come up with a system called NextGen. NextGen will supply pilots with the tools and information they need to make many decisions that are now made by controllers. At its heart is a sophisticated piece of equipment that will soon be added not to towers, but to planes. To see if it works, test pilots have to take it for a ride. We're liberating the airplane to do what it's designed to do and not constraining it by our management. Researchers have installed a revolutionary navigational computer in the back of this executive jet. We're currently flying over Delaware. It's called ADSB. It stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. It's a sophisticated GPS receiver that paints a detailed picture of any plane anywhere near this flight. So the pilot has what we call situational awareness of what's flying around him. Uh, the aircraft then broadcasts that position once a second. So any other aircraft flying within RF range of that, that aircraft now knows its position as well. 
There's nothing like this in any cockpit today. Because it's still experimental technology, the FAA is testing this system in the cabin of the aircraft. If tests like this succeed, it will someday be in the cockpit of every plane in America and eventually around the world. Once the ADSB system is fully operational, everyone will know where you are, how high you're flying, and where you're headed. It's a key piece of the future because it is so accurate. The computer the researchers are putting to the test today is the central element in the most significant retooling of the American aircraft control system in half a century. The technology on board the FAA flight might be the solution to the overtaxed air traffic control system. Test pilots regularly take to the skies to help researchers prepare the new system for America's airliners. The beautiful thing about ADS-B is, is it gives the pilots in the cockpit and the air traffic controller is basically the same picture. ADS-B is more than a map of other planes. The idea is to show pilots what now only air traffic controllers can see. Data about the planes that are in a pilot's airspace. With ADS-B, you'll see who that other aircraft is. You'll see an identifier on it. You'll be able to see planes on runways. You'll see planes in the traffic pattern, and they'll get a better feel for what's going on around you, especially if you're on an uncontrolled airport. Giving pilots all that information in the cockpit will allow them to make decisions about how to get to their destinations quickly and safely. The current system relies on radars for the detection and tracking of aircraft. And radar was a great technology in 1940, but fundamentally it's very sloppy. Today, ground-based radar bounces radio signals off an airplane to calculate its position. It can be off by as much as two miles. That's why we keep aircraft three miles or more apart, because we're just not that confident of the, of the solution. With NextGen, an onboard GPS unit will constantly receive signals from a GPS satellite. This will tell pilots where they are, down to within a few hundred feet. A more accurate picture of airspace will mean airliners are able to fly closer together. The FAA hopes this will help relieve the congestion at busy airports. Today, only controllers have an accurate picture of air traffic. They use this information to guide pilots around potential problems. The pilots themselves have no way to independently confirm where they are in relation to all other flights. They must rely on controllers to tell them. The weakness of the system was exposed years before next-gen tests began. Radio communication will largely be replaced by an exchange of electronic data. Automation is extremely important, and in the future, it's going to be able to get rid of the type of errors that occur when you put massive pressure on a human being to be 100% perfect. With the elimination of radio chatter, air traffic control towers of the future will be very quiet places. Controllers on the ground will still be needed to move planes in and out of airports. But with more accurate information at their disposal and less need to talk to pilots, they'll be able to handle far more flights than they do today. Zero four zero. On board the FAA's flight, the new GPS-based technology gets the ultimate test. Without any warning from air traffic control. Do you see him, Dan? No, I don't see him yet. There he is. Oh, there he is. They notice another plane, just 400 feet below. In the back of the jet, the next-gen system detects the other plane. Had the system been in the cockpit, it would have shown the pilots its precise location. Without it, they rely on a piece of technology called TCAS to warn them of the danger. Using signals transmitted from plane to plane, the Traffic Collision Avoidance System warns pilots when other planes are too close. Uh, TCAS gives the pilot a traffic advisory at 45 seconds before the potential collision. 
And then at approximately 25 seconds or so before the potential collision, a resolution advisory is given to actually tell the pilots to climb or descend to avoid the altitude of the other aircraft. And normally air traffic will call that to us, but yeah, they didn't yeah. even call the traffic, no. so that TCAS helped a lot. TCAS can help pilots of approaching planes avoid collisions. But with the new system, pilots will be able to prevent their planes from getting dangerously close in the first place. You know, with ADS-B, we're going to be able to see that traffic on the display. Today, the system works perfectly. The pilots of the test flight see the danger and avoid it. TCAS can help pilots avoid a collision. But having it on board is no guarantee that an accident won't happen. Back over Atlantic City, pilots are preparing to bring their test flight in for a landing. Yes. Today, the flight has to stay within tightly confined boundaries set out by air traffic controllers. But when all aircraft are equipped with ADS-B, that won't be the case. We're going to have airplanes flying directly to where they need to fly and computers keeping them apart. At the FAA, researchers have been designing systems that get flights from A to B in a whole new way. Right now, there's no way for controllers to know the exact location of a plane. That's why flights are confirmed to preset highways to keep them from colliding. With GPS-based NextGen, a pilot can follow any route he chooses, provided there aren't any other planes in his path. He can choose a much more direct route to his destination. If we could have airplanes going in all directions and more efficiently directly to where they want to go, uh, we would be able to double, triple, maybe even quadruple the number of aircraft that we could safely handle in the skies at one time. By charting their own route, ADS-B will allow pilots to keep a safe distance from other planes without having to stick to a preset highway in the sky. Maintaining that distance is important because even the best technology can't keep airplanes apart. Technology can provide humans with information, but can't control what they do with it. Over Atlantic City, the FAA jet is on its final approach. Runway is clear. Bring the flaps to uh, 60. Its two-hour test flight has brought NextGen one step closer to being installed on commercial airplanes. Nice job, John. Two reversers. Speed's at 90. I got the yoke. When ADS-B is everywhere and the data is being displayed in the cockpit, that will allow the airlines to fly hugely more efficiently. Over the past 50 years, air traffic control has evolved tremendously. Human error, technical difficulties, and poor communication have taken the lives of hundreds of people and uncovered deadly weaknesses in the current system. Today, those weaknesses are one step closer to being fixed. I think the next-gen system, as it has evolved now, is really going to be excellent. It's going to start in the direction that we need to go for the future. The elements that make up next-gen will be introduced slowly over the next decade. Piece by piece, a whole new system of air traffic control will take shape in the U.S. and ultimately around the world.